In this video we're going to take a look at graphing exponential functions and in particular we'll show you uh, how to graph uh, reflections in both the x and y axes. We'll show you how to identify and graph horizontal and vertical stretches and compressions as well as translations, just sliding uh, the graph up and down vertically or left and right horizontally. Um, the first example is going to demonstrate exponential growth and the second will be focused on exponential decay. So let's just take a quick look at this, uh, this first function here. The first thing we'll notice is that we've got a base of two, and that means that this original parent function was just y equals two to the exponent x before all of these various transformations were applied. Um, the other key thing that I want you to notice is up in the exponent, and you'll see here that we have the exponent uh, two bracket uh, x plus three, and what that has allowed us to identify is right there, the two is the in this case, it's a horizontal compression, and we've also been able to identify the other half, which is a horizontal translation, and in fact, this will be to the left by a factor of three. The key thing that I wanted you to realize, though, is if the exponent was actually expressed just like that, you need to factor it first. So we'd have to factor this exponent to pull out this k value and get x just all by itself inside the brackets. So this is what we're shooting for. This is what we expect to see. So if you're ever presented with an exponent that has something like 2x plus 6, make sure you common factor out the k value and then that will give you something that you can easily identify both the horizontal stretch compression and the uh, translation left or right. All right then, so how do we get started with this? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually graph the parent function, just y equals two to the x. So there's the parent function graphed, and when I graph the parent function, I can also create a quick little table of values. So x and y, and then I will just put in uh, typical values that we'd like to see. So for example, x is negative one, zero, and one. And if I look at the graph, I know that uh, y has a value of one half when x is negative one, one at zero, and two at uh, one. And I can see those points right there, there, and there. Okay, so I get kind of the general shape of the, of the graph. I'd also like to point out that don't forget, um, uh, graphs that are exponential nature have an asymptote. So there is an asymptote right along there at x equals zero, or rather, sorry, y equals zero. And when we graph our final translated transformed function, we will make sure that we put in a new asymptote and we'll label that as well. Okay, so how do we get started? Well, all I'm going to do is follow a real simple rule. And the simple rule is that you always stretch before you move. So just think of exercise. You're always going to stretch before you start running or working out or something like that. So if you just remember, stretch before you move. Um, you will apply the transformations in the correct order to give you the appropriate graph. And included with the stretches, we will also include the reflections. Okay? So if I take a look at the, the graph here, I can see that I've got a couple of things happening. So let's start with the y direction or the vertical direction. I can see that at the front end I have a negative one in front of the base of two. So we don't have a stretch going on. If there was a two there or a three or four or something like that, it would stretch the y values. But in this case, we just have a negative sign. And what that's going to do is in fact reflect this graph in the x-axis. So instead of opening up, it will actually open down. So to apply that, I'm just gonna multiply uh, by negative one. Okay, so I'm going to change all of the y values so that now they are negative, their previous value. So this is negative one half, one will become negative one, and two will become negative two. So I have, been taking, I have taken care of that vertical uh, reflection and stretch. Okay, now let's move on to the horizontal stretch or compression. Well, there it is right there. It's that k value hiding in front of the bracket. The two would look like it's going to double all of the x values. But remember, anything associated with the horizontal, the x, is always the opposite of what it appears as. So in fact, this two, 
which is the k value sitting out in front, while it looks like it would double all of the values, in fact what it's going to do is multiply them by one half or compress all of the x values. So above the x values I'm just going to indicate that I've got a uh, the 2 value and that is going to compress. So negative 1 becomes negative 1 half. 0, well times a half is just 0 and 1 times a half is 1 half. Okay, so I've taken care of the 2 and I've also taken care of the negative 1. So those are the two stretches and they're done. So now we can apply the moves, the translations. So let's look and we'll look to the y. Um, there's the plus 4. Now what that is going to do is move the asymptote uh, up to positive 4. So immediately I know there's an asymptote at positive 4. So why don't I just go ahead and put that in. So at positive 4 I'm just going to put a dotted line along here and that is going to be the location of the new asymptote. Okay, and it's a horizontal asymptote. I'll just label this line that this is y equals 4. All right, and what that's going to do to all of my y values is it's going to increase them all by moving them up by four. So negative one half now becomes positive uh, three and one half. Negative one, well, now is positive three, and negative two is now positive two. We have added the positive four in the y direction to all the y points. All right, last little step here. Let's take a look at this horizontal translation. Again, because it's associated with the horizontal and in with the x, it's kind of opposite of what it appears. It looks like a positive 3, but remember, what we're looking for is x minus, subtract, and then the transformation. So it's actually x minus negative 3. That's how we got plus 3. So this is a movement to the left, and it's going to be just a horizontal slide, a horizontal shift, a horizontal translation towards the left. So negative 3 from 1 or negative 1 half, we're now going to be over at negative 3 and a half. 0 used to be the x, well we're sliding to the left so now we're just at negative 3. And positive 1 half, well we're sliding to the left, negative 3, so this is now negative 2 and a half. Okay, so now we have enough information to actually go ahead and graph our new graph. Okay, we're going to use the outermost points, that is the red on the left for the x's and the green on the right for the y's. So to start out with we've got negative three and a half on the x, so I'll just go negative one, negative two, negative three and a half, and then up to positive three and a half, so up one, two, three, and a half. So there's our first dot right there. Then I am moving to negative three in the x direction and positive three in the y direction. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and up one, two, three, right there. And finally, negative two and a half in the x direction, one, two, and up to positive 2. So 1, 2, right there. And I think you can see that the shape is kind of lending itself. The, the location of the asymptote at 4 helps us out. So taking the asymptote into account and the shape of those dots, we can see that we're going to curve here, curve here, and then continue on in that direction right there. Okay, and Let's just take a look at it and, and kind of make sense of what we've seen. In the original graph, we saw that, you know, from our y-intercept, the first step we expected to see, and that y-intercept was one away from the asymptote, was over one and up one. Okay? And then over one and up two. That was kind of the stepping pattern, if you'd like. So here, we can see that from the same sort of point, that's one away, we have gone not over one and up one, but only over a half and up one. And that was due to the compression. Okay? 
If we look at the next point, instead of going over one and up two, we're going over a half and again up two and that takes us to that point which is perfect. That's right on our sketch. So we can see that horizontal compression being applied. So just taking a look at the original reference points, we can see that there was our original reference point. And then in our final graph, you can see one away from the asymptote would be this point here. And we can check our, you know, our, our translations to make sure that they also line up. Now just remember, um, this original graph would have been reflected downward. So that point actually would have been down here as this graph sort of got reflected first and went in this kind of shape. So we'll be sure to use this as our starting point. And when we move, you can see that we've gone one, two, three to the left. There's a shift to the left. And one, two, three, four up to there. So everything seems to line up nicely. And our final graph is this arc here that opens downward and moves to the right. And that is that graph listed up there. Let's take a, a look at an example that shows exponential decay. Okay, here's an example that shows uh, exponential decay and it's we're being asked to graph an exponential function. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this base function here and we can see that the base function for this graph is going to be one half to the exponent x. Okay, so that's the parent function. Now, it's exponential decay because the base is in between 0 and 1. So I know that generally the shape for a decay function kind of looks like that. Okay, as time goes on, the amount uh, is decreasing exponentially. Okay, let's take a look and see what else we have uh, kind of going on here. Um, there's a 3 at the front end. So it's associated with the y value. So that is a vertical stretch of 3. So I'm going to expect sort of this graph to, you know, get stretched up a little more. Um, this negative right here, well that is a horizontal reflection. So instead of this, we're going to get that. Okay, we're going to sort of flip it over horizontally, reflect it in the y-axis. The negative one here, well, that is a translation. And because associated with the x again, it's kind of opposite land, this is actually going to be movement to the right by one. And then finally, we have a negative 2 at the tail end, and that is going to move the entire graph uh, down by 2. And that's also going to show the location of the new asymptote, because the asymptote will be down at negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll get the base function graphed, and then we'll go follow the same procedure that we did before. All right, so here's the base function, and this function shown is uh, y equals one-half to the exponent x. And if I was to just make a quick little table of values here, I could say that when y is negative one, so right here, I can clearly see that the, or when x is negative one, I can see that y value is two. Uh, when x is zero, we have one. And when x is one, well, one-half to the exponent one is one half. So those three points, those key points that we sort of start out with to find the behavior around the origin are right there and that follows the the shape of the graph. So let's apply uh, all these different transformations to the graph and we'll just do them one step at a time and you'll see that it's quite easy to uh, to get an accurate representation. Okay? All right, so remember, we always stretch before we move. Uh, some people like just to remember that the rules are you follow the bed mass rules, which means we will start with the three because that's multiplication and the negative one in front of there because that's multiplication. Whatever you use to remind yourself of how to apply the transformations is fine. Just make sure that you're consistent. And I just like to remember you stretch before you move. So the y direction here, all of those values are being stretched by a factor of three. So I'm going to take each of the y values and I'm just going to multiply them by 3. So 2 will become 6, 1 will become 3, and 1 half will become 3 halves, or 1 and a half. Okay? All right, the next transformation. Well, again, stretch before we move. There's a negative 1, and that is in the horizontal direction, so it is applying to the x values. 
And this is a multiplication of negative 1 because we're not only going to reflect it, but if there was a value there, like negative you know, 2 or negative 3 or negative 4 or even negative 1 half, um, that would apply to a negative or rather a, a horizontal stretch or a compression. Remember, the stretches and compressions are opposite to what they appear as the k value. A k value of 2 would imply a compression, so all the values would be multiplied by a half. If you had a k value of 1 third, that is a horizontal stretch, and you would then multiply each of the x values by 3 to get a horizontal stretch with a factor of 3. But here, because we're sort of, we got off easy, we just have a 1 there, the only thing we have to worry about is the negative. So we'll go ahead and multiply and we get negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Well 0 times anything is 0 and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Okay. Alright, so moving on. Now we can start addressing the movements. So we have already done our stretches. Well let's do our moves. So why don't we take care of the negative 2 at the tail end. We'll do the y first. So that is just a simple movement down of negative 2. So we're just going to take all of the x, or all the y values rather, and just subtract 2. 6 becomes 4, 3 becomes 1, and 3 halves subtract 2, which would be 4 halves, gives you negative 1 half. Okay? Following the same process for the horizontal translation, this is a translation of positive 1, because remember, it kind of appears opposite. So we're just going to add 1 to all of the x values to adjust them to their new location. Uh, 1 plus another 1 is 2, 0 plus 1 is 1, and negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay, so given that, we now have enough information to go ahead and plot our new curve. But the first thing I'm going to do to help me out get a, a good sense of where we're plotting it is I'm going to put in the uh, the asymptote at negative 2. So I'm just going to go down to negative 2 here and put in the asymptote because this is going to be a sort of boundary that will help me sort of get the overall shape. And I'll just label this asymptote as y equals negative 2 just to make sure we're clear we know what that line is. Okay, time to place the uh, the values on the on the graph. So the first point is 2 for the x and 4 for the y. So I will go over to 2, 1, 2, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's the dot right there. The next point is 1 for the x and 1 for the y. So 1 and up 1 right there. The final point, 0 for the x and negative one-half for the y. So zero for the x and negative one-half for the y. Right there. Okay? Now, given the location of the asymptote, I can see that, you know, we're going to have this sort of nice smooth curve that comes in from this side along the asymptote and then intersects there, 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 and not as smooth as I would have liked. I could redraw it, but you get the idea. It will approach the asymptote. But those three points are what it's going to intersect. And I like a couple of things about this. One is, uh, I like the fact that the, um, the negative shows me that, yes, in fact, it has been reflected in the y-axis. I also like the fact that the asymptote, everything is moved down. And then if we were to take a couple of points over here to the left, so for example, negative 1, that might give us a clear idea of where this uh, intersects. In fact, why don't we do that? I'm just going to remove that, and let's add one more point uh, in here just to see what we get. So when x is negative 1, what is the y value? So I'll put negative 1 in for x, and we get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, okay? negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. 1 half to the exponent 2 is 1 half squared, which is 1 quarter. And we would have then 3 times 1 quarter, which is 3 quarter, minus 2, which is 8 quarters. 
Okay. So again, all I've done is I've just substituted x in here and then evaluated this. Well, 3 over 4 minus 8 over 4 is negative 5 over 4. I hope you agree. And that's sort of negative 1 and a quarter. So if I was to go to negative 1, I'd go down negative 1, and negative 1 and a quarter would be right about there. And that, I think, gives me a little bit better of an idea where this curve should be. So I'm just going to go down here, straight down here, continue down, get closer to the asymptote, and then uh, head out in this direction. I think that's a far better sketch. So if you get enough points and you're kind of interested in, well, I need to know a little more precisely where things are, feel free to pick another point, put it into your equation, and get an answer of where it is. Okay, but very quickly, that's how we can apply the transformations. You just start with the base function, start with the key points, apply all the transformations, and sketch it really quickly.